Welcome to the Biblioteca Orientalis. Today we have an outstanding scholar in Islamic architectural studies and archaeology. Her name is Selma Samar Damluji. She doesn't need a real presentation. And um, we will uh, discuss her uh, last book about Hassan Fati that is just released. Actually, there are several books about Hassan Fati. So uh, why did you decide to write another one? What was actually missing? It's a very good question. Thank you for inviting me to this um, platform. The story of this book goes back very long. It was when I was working with uh, Fethi in the 1980s and he requested that we do a publication of all his writings in one volume. And I worked with him for two years and essentially it was working on editing his play Al Mashrabiya and his other story Utopia and various writings that he did, including the Manual of Mud Brick Architecture. So there were all these papers that he had originally written that nobody else had published. And somehow this project never materialized. They looked for a sponsor. They didn't find a sponsor. So it was put on hold. And then, out of the blue, I was invited to give a seminar on Hassan Fathi at UAV in Venice. And then there was this um, young uh, lady architect who had graduated with a PhD on Fathi, who I'd never met. She was so brilliant in her presentation and in her understanding and in her um, analysis of Fathi that I was completely taken aback by her. And after the seminar, I congratulated her and I asked her if she'd like to work with me on the research to do the book. That summer she came to Beirut and I brought out the boxes of materials that I had on Fatih. And she was so interested in all the contents so that we created a new outline for the book. So this is how the book came together. And I think that's what makes the book so different. The fact that a lot of it is actually written by Hassan Fatih not by me. I am just the uh, messenger, if you like, and the translator, if you like. Suppose you want to suggest to a, a young student uh, to read the book, what could be the three important lessons that he could retrieve from your book? I think the most important points for architecture students in particular is the fact that this book is essentially and most importantly on earth architecture, on the role of earth architecture, which has become much more relevant today than it was 40 years ago, because now it's a question of saving the earth and saving the planet, the ecology, the environment, which we don't need to talk about. Uh, Fethi is a master when he discusses this, and it's incredible that he managed to discuss this at such an early period when the world, and especially our part of the world in the Middle East and the region, was at the height of celebrating modern architecture and contemporary architecture. You know, this new, clean lines of the Bauhaus and Corbusier and, and uh, uh, Van der Rohe and all these people, Gropius, etc. And there he was contesting and now, this contest or revolution that he created is one, or that he wanted to create, is one that is more valid now. The second is the relevance and contemporaneity of this work at this age. Since um, the ideas that he is presented, presenting, the revolution that he is calling for is one that is definitely, desperately needed now. Plus all the design and, and technology uh, that he is presenting in his thesis and in his work is one that we still need to look at and master today in order to be able to move from there into a much more 
developed way, whether it's through digital tools or etc. The third most important point that um, students of architecture have lost completely is the fact that architecture is not only functional and um, um, scientific and it's not just about walls, but it's what Fethi used to always say, it's about the space between the walls and it's about the poetics of that space and the beauty that is involved and encompassed within. And Fethi shows this through his beautiful watercolors and paintings, through the um, poetry that he cites, whether through Lao Tzu or whether through um, his readings and uh, through the plays that he did, his study of colonialism, his talk of a post-colonialism period in Egypt that we are still living in the Arab world. So it was about taste, it was about elegance, it was about form, it was about history, it was about geometry and it was about art and music. He talks about music and all of this appreciation points to an architecture that um, is multifaceted, an architecture that in includes a lot of knowledge that is missing from the curricula of um, our contemporary architects and students. And this is the importance of the book. There is one interview I did with him on the poetics of space and he talks very much about the relationship of um, music to architecture. The same geometry, the same relationship that Al-Farabi, who's an Islamic historian and scientist, philosopher, talked about, the same scale that exists in music, exists in geometry and in space. So Fethi was elaborating on this and finding parallels in the description of the Islamic city and what an Islamic city means in terms of a square, a piazza, a mosque, a, a side street, um, the opening of the square. It's, and when you get to the crescendo is when you arrive to the main piazza, if you like, you know. And it's the understanding of the nuances of all of this. I haven't invented anything, nor has Fethi invented anything. But it's, this is where knowledge is important.